Hey, how's it going today? And I just wanted to do something fun today because I feel like I've been having a lot, doing a lot of work and no play. So I'm just going to do something fun today. So this is basically, you could call it pain and healing along with metered health or metered levels. So I'll show you what I'm going to mean. So I hit play and I've got my third person character here and you see we've got a display for oxygen level and if I come over here into low oxygen you see that I'm losing my oxygen here in this level and this can be health, food, whatever you want but this is just oxygen level so you see how it's kind of dropping kind of clumping down as a chunk at a time it's going down in five but I'm running out of oxygen I gotta get out of here so now I notice over here there's this high oxygen level so I'm just going to mosey on up here and maybe things will be better for me up here. So I come up here and you see my oxygen level and notice how it comes back up and then I'm good to go and then I'm back and then I can walk over here and go back into low oxygen. <laughs> so this actually isn't very hard to do and there's just some little steps. I'll show you how we do this. So. I'm gonna escape out of this and go to a new project. And we're just gonna go to the third person and we'll go create. And I'm not gonna save any of that. And here we go. Da, 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 da. And okay. So here we are in the third person template. And the first thing we're gonna do is Actually, this is called a pain causing volume and it can be used for, of course, anything where you just want to show something being inflicted upon some, <laughs> some sort of deficit state is it potentially occurring. So I'm just going to drag this. I'm going to go to the, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my top view here and I'm going to make sure I'm on the pain causing volume and I'm going to zoom out. And now I know I want to go over to this circle thing. So I'm just going to drag over there and then I'm going to hit the space bar and then I'm just going to scale this up, thing up like that. And I can go back into perspective now and I can scale it up this way. Okay, so there's our torture chamber or whatever you want to call it. Now I know it's there and I know that disk is there, but I'm just going to call this, uh, I'll call it, bring in a text renderer. Just, I'll drag it onto the scene over here. I don't want to scale it up. I do want to shift its location though. So I'm just going to hit F and come in closer. Just back up here a little bit. So I'm just trying to position this roughly on the top of this thing. I have to hit Alt, I think, gives me a little better maneuverability here. This just takes a second to finagle this. Now it's pointing the wrong direction, so I'm gonna go into its rotation and put 180. So now it should, whoops, 180. Now it should be facing us. And I just, where did it go? Trying to find it in the outliner here. There's two of them, and that's the one I want. So one, there's one that says third person display, and I, this is the one I want. And I just wanted to say, let's call this low oxygen. And play and just kind of jump in there and just see. Yeah, so low oxygen, we see it up there. Okay. And then, of course, I can make these, I could scale this up. I can make this font bigger here, a lot bigger. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and just center this and make this 100. Let's make it big. There we go. That's a lot better. Okay, so now if I hit play, we got that set up. Now, the only other thing I want to do is on the pain-causing <laughs> volume. Oh my gosh, that's a funny name. We can set the damage per second, so we can leave it at one, but let's just go ahead and set it to five. That's a little bit faster, a little bit more. 
and then that's all we have to do on on that so now what we're going to do is go into the content browser and go to our third person go to blueprints and come in here and we just have to do a couple things you know in the interest of time I think what I, I would like to do, because I'm going to have to come back in here anyway, let me just dock this and go back in here, go back into the content level, and let's just go ahead and create our user interface, because I need to call it up anyway, so so I want to be able to have it in existence to be able to call it. And so we'll just call this oxygen meter, okay, and then I'm going to double click into it. And then we're just going to grab a canvas panel and drag that onto the scene. And then we're just going to get a some text and drag this onto the scene. I think I'll put it over here. And all I'm going to just do is type in oxygen level. And we'll size it to fit like that. Oops, size constant fit. And then we're going to go in here and get a progress bar. And this is so great that this stuff is already programmed in for us. And we're just going to drag this up to here. Like that. And on here we can set the percent. Let's just go ahead and set it to 100 by default. So there's our oxygen level. Let me just try to line this up a little bit better. What do you have to do sometimes is just set the snapping to 1. So that you have finer control. That's good enough. Okay. So now I just wanted this to be in existence before I called it. So now let's go back into our third person character here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to right click here and we're going to search for something called damage, event damage. I think it's called event damage, event any damage, this thing. And it's related to the pain causing volume. And so the, the other thing that I want to do is I want to create a variable here and I'll just call this oxygen level. And we're going to set this to be a float. It doesn't have to be public. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to drag off of here. All we're going to do is show that the damage is being incremented. So we're going to get our float value here and then we're going to go off of here and get set. So all we're going to do is adjust our level here. So then we just need to drag off of here and get a subtract. And so the, all this is going to do is reset as our pain causing volume is decrementing our level. Then we just this will change our value here. So so we just trigger that with set. We'll drag the damage into here. And then this, I guess this is kind of weird how I did this. We'll just pull this into there. And that's all we have to do in here. That's just one other thing we have to do. So this is going to, as the pain causing volume is decreasing our energy or level, this is going to register the updated value in here. So this is kind of going to give us our health level in a sense. So now the only other thing I need to do is come over here and now that we have our user widget, I go create widget. So this will be our interface and we have to do this to be able to display our interface. So I'll set this to oxygen meter and then here we just add it to viewport. And as far as I know, that's all we need to do here. So compile and save and we probably we won't see anything other than if I hit play right now we're just gonna see our oxygen level over here and actually I see it's kinda going off the screen a little bit there can I close out that? Oh there we go okay so we can see our oxygen level our oxygen chamber over here and good we're, we're on our way we just have to go back into our oxygen meter now and add some functionality to our progress bar select on it and then here where it says percent bind we're going to go create binding there's other ways to do that other than binding but this is just the easiest way for right now and we're going to disconnect that and then we're going to get that our variable from our over here in our third person our oxygen level 
and because we want to update it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag off here and I'll get it by casting to the third person. And then I just got to right click and get player character here and hook that up. And then it's weird about the percentage because the percentage is actually reflected as a decimal between 0, 0.00 and 1.0. So it's you know, 0 0.01 is 1%, 0 0.02 is 2%. So it's coming in as a float. So what we have to do is we actually have to times this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag off and get our oxygen level right here. And then what we're going to do is drag off of here and go multiply. And we're going to multiply it by 0 0.01 and then that'll turn it into a percentage and we just have to put that in there like that if you don't do that what will happen is it won't show any change on your we here because anything above one will show as a hundred percent so it has to show as a, a value between zero and one if this were just a display point zero one it'd be one percent but one will show as a hundred percent anything above one so we'll go compile and save and now it should actually work. So our oxygen level is showing as zero though. So what that tells me is I have to go in and set the value here, not there, but over here. So over here on our oxygen level, let's set the default value for 100. So it starts out as 100. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay, so now we come over here and I jump up on my low oxygen and you can see our level is dropping. Fantastic. So that's cool, right? And that could be anything. This could be food, health. I just calling it oxygen level, but it could be anything. And as soon as I jump off, it stops. So that's not a good place to hang out for me. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna create is a way to restore ourselves. So I'm going to escape out of this. I'm going to go back in the content level. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to blueprint class actor. And I'm just going to call this restore. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to double click into it. And here we're going to get a collision box. Oops, a box. I should just type in box, a box collision. And I just know already that this needs to be big. So I'm just going to go five, five, five. And you can make this even bigger, six, 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 maybe if you want. It needs to be good sized. And then we're going to go ahead and just for our, the game environment, I'm going to go text render and drag this up. Well, I don't want it to be a child, so I'll drag this up. And let me hit Alt and come around. And we're just going to call this High Oxygen. And we'll go ahead and we can make this big too. 50. Maybe make it bigger than that. Maybe make it 100. And let's go ahead and center it. And hopefully that'll be facing. I think it's going to be facing the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and make this 180 degrees and turn it around. We're kind of looking at it from the back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the event graph here. And this is kind of fun. This part of it was kind of fun to figure this out. Is we're going to add a, a timeline. And I think this is kind of a fun way to do it. What we do is go into the box collider here. Come down here. And go on component begin overlap. It takes us right where we need to be. And so what we're going to do is we're going to cast again to our third person variable cast to BP third person. So we can get that variable. Everybody wants that variable. And actually I can just drag this in right here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to go add timeline in here. This has a lot of functionality. You can just leave it called timeline and I'm just going to double click into it and we're going to create uh, what's called a float track. 
I can just right click here and add a key and just make sure these values are both set to zero and then I can just I can click anywhere else on the timeline right here it doesn't really matter because I can set the values here so this is a five second event so I, I can make this a hundred I'm gonna make this value be a hundred I guess yeah I guess I can make it a hundred right yeah and then a hundred and the time is gonna be five seconds here and if we click uh, let's see here and here we can see the whole graph it's just a simple linear graph and we come back into the event graph and so what we're gonna do is we want it to play from the start and then we want to set our values. So we're going to right track up here and go set oxygen level here. So we want it to play from the start. And we want all the values to go into our oxygen meter. And we want it to update so it continuously sends values into there. And as far as I know, that should do it. So we'll hit that and save. And you can take a screenshot of that if you want. And let's see if this where we're at. So, oh, okay. I went. I forgot to do. <laughs> I forgot that one of the main things is I need to drag my oxygen restore over here. Oops. I'm gonna. Oops. Let me go back this way. Whoa. How did I get so? I'll click here. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to drag this and position this right there on that area, in that area. Like that. Okay, that should do it. Now hit play. So here we go. So I come over here, jump up there. Whoops. What's going on? I'm not very good at this. There we go. See my oxygen is dropping. I'm in the low oxygen area. Then they come over here. Oh, what's that? High oxygen. Maybe I need to go up there, huh? And come up here. And you see my oxygen level comes back up. And that's it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. So there it comes down. And then I'm, I'm getting kind of dizzy and weak. I'm going to get out of here. And I better come back up here. That sets my oxygen. And up here I go. And look, I get replenished. And that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.